My name is Dr. Kevin S. McGrew. I'm currently the director of the Institute for Applied Psychometrics and a visiting professor in educational psychology at the University of Minnesota. I also serve as an external consultant to Interactive Metronome and also an intelligence theory expert and testing expert for the Dharma Ramakana Foundation for the development of the first Indonesian CHC-based intelligence test battery for children. Just a few housekeeping details. This presentation is developed by Kevin S. McGrew at the Institute for Applied Psychometrics for Educational Purposes. Contact information is listed on this slide, as well as a reminder that you can pause this presentation since there's a video at any time to digest the material or read some slides in depth. If you want additional information regarding my research related to this presentation, you should look up the Mind Hub. That's where I report various research and special reports, copies of book chapters and articles I've written, news updates, ideas and projects in consultation and training, and special projects of the Institute for Applied Psychometrics. You can also access my two primary blogs from the Mind Hub. The two primary blogs are IQ's Corner, which focuses on intelligent insights and intelligence theories and tests, and the Brain Clock blog, which is a focus on contemporary research and theory regarding brain-based mental timekeeping, or what some people refer to as the human brain clock or series of distributed brain clocks. The blogs differ from the Mind Hub in an important way. The blogs are updated on a very frequent basis, almost daily. In contrast, the Mind Hub is updated on a more intermittent basis when there are special reports and publications that need to be added to that web page. Human intelligence research, how should we integrate it? And how should it inform the development of intelligence tests? I believe we need to spend more time, especially those of us who are involved heavily in the development of intelligence tests for clinical use. We need to spend more time connecting the dots. What do I mean by that? First, let's get this point clear. The cattell horn carroll or CHC model is largely considered the consensus psychometric model of intelligence and is currently the dominant taxonomy for understanding human intelligence from a psychometric perspective and for, and for informing intelligence test development and interpretation. A major thesis and point I'd like to make is that given the consensus CHC taxonomy, for us to better understand intelligence now and in the future, and to improve intellectual assessment, test development, and practice, we need to go beyond CHC. We need to get out of our comfort zone. We need to move beyond pure psychometric test development research and move out to where the magic happens. As this slide says, you can't innovate when you're within your comfort zone. I think you still can, but more of the innovation will, will come from when you go outside of your comfort zone, and in this context, psychometric CHC theory, and look at research related to human intelligence from other disciplines and start connecting the dots. For example, there's a large number of research journals in such varied areas as intelligence, psycholinguistics, cognitive psychology, brain science, different forms of exceptionalities and disabilities, neuropsychology, neuroscience, educational research, educational psychology, behavioral neuroscience, developmental psychology, biological psychology, and methodological studies dealing with statistics, measurement, and assessment concepts. Connecting the dots, going beyond CHC theory. For the past 10, 12, 15, I'm not sure how many years, I've been reading a lot of articles and findings from different disciplines as illustrated in the previous slide. And in the process, I will frequently run across an idea or concept in one area, which I find is related to the same idea or concept in a different discipline or research area. But they might be, the researchers might be using different terminology, theoretical models, methodological tools, but there's some connection. Also, sometimes you'll stumble across some finding in another area, which, which will go, make you go, aha, I see a gap in our current understanding of psychometric intelligence. So the concept is we need to start connecting the dots from these different disciplines. 
to move beyond CHC. I sometimes like to call it going outside of our professional research sandbox. For example, here's a young boy playing in a sandbox with his favorite tool. Maybe it's me, maybe it's not. Consider that the CHC psychometric sandbox. I've been spending a lot of time in there during my career, and it's very informative and it's very time consuming. But once you start going out of that parochial psychometric box of ideas and findings and go to other professional sandboxes and disciplines, one can eventually find some interesting connections where you can connect some dots and often find something very beautiful, innovative, and exhilarating that can inform intelligence research and the development and interpretation of intelligence tests or going beyond CHC. As a result of doing this, I've struggled with how to integrate research from such diverse areas, focusing on different levels of human intelligence into an organizational system. And recently, I reread a part of Earl Hunt's Human Intelligence book, which was published in 2011, and I liked this very elegant category system he had for human intelligence research. He talked about three levels. There was the psychometric level, which is the one that I've worked with primarily. There's the information processing models in research, and there's biological and neurocognitive. I really resonated to that three-level category in, in interpretation system, and have now revised it into a four-level explanation system for integrating research. The four levels of research that I'm gonna articulate differ in terms of level of theoretical reductionism and explanation, and I borrowed this concept from Earl Hunt. The bottom level are biological and neurocognitive models of human intelligence that address, in particular, the concept of neural or brain efficiency. Primary research in this area is reaction time research pioneered by Arthur Jensen or reaction time G, Ram Sayer's temporal G, which relates to a large body of research with regarding the concept that the brain has a human mental timekeeping piece or brain clock or series of distributed brain clocks which underlie cognitive performance. Here's a graphic that's moving which conveys the idea that this research focuses on neural efficiency, rate of neural oscillations, and neural synchronization. Over here is a graphic that represents the importance of research that has exploded in the last 10 years regarding the importance of white matter tract organization, integrity, and efficiency. That is, the brain's, if you want to say, internet backbone or interstate system for flow of information. The next level is also at the biological and neurocognitive level. And research in this, at this level is drawn primarily from the human connectome, functional brain network research, which has exploded during the past 10 years. And I've just mentioned an illustrative study here by Bresler and Menon in 2010, which is one of the better brain network uh, synthesis papers I've read. Research on the rich club network, which is represented over here, especially this diagram, is that there seem to be major communication hubs almost like the air traffic control system airline network in our country. There are different hubs that communicate with each other with different degrees of connectivity. The one model that has received the most support as it relates to understanding human intelligence is the parietal frontal integration theory or the PFIT model. At the next level are information processing models or research. Hunt sometimes calls them mechanical models. And here's kind of a standard figure that represents the flow of information in the human brain. And this draws upon ideas that conceptualize human intelligence from an information processing model or the analogy of human brains acting like computers. The final level where most of us have done research in the area of test development and understanding the taxonomy of human cognitive abilities are measurable cognitive behaviors or psychometric models. And the one I mentioned earlier was the Cattell Horn Carroll theory or CHC theory. It is my thesis and belief that those of us who are working at this level in terms of developing applied measures of human intelligence and how to understand and interpret those tests, that we need to integrate information from all the other levels to better develop new and innovative measures of human intelligence and cognitive functioning, and also to better interpret and understand performance on intelligence tests. 
I represent the same four levels here, but do it pictorially. So here's the neural efficiency level, and this represents white matter track communication systems. This represents neural efficiency, especially reaction time G. This represents temporal G. But the next level is the idea of brain networks and communication hubs, and the PFIT model of intelligence in particular, the parietal frontal integration theory. Then we move up to information processing models. And finally at the top is a diagram that represents the psychometric CHC taxonomy in the form of a periodic table of human cognitive elements. I hope you can see how that figure kind of looks like a table of periodic cognitive elements or human or, or the periodic table of in chemistry. That's a deliberate analogy I'm trying to make here and I will make clearer in future presentations and modules.